Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and it is time that we get our hands dirty again by digging into Photoshop and do another start to finish photo editing tutorial. Today's edits are going to be a little bit more subtle, we're not going to be crazy, so we're going to go from this image right here that I took in Kyoto earlier this year and we're going to bring it to this image right here. It's pretty simple, we have to fix a couple of areas that are in the image, we have to work on the colors ever so slightly, and then add a little bit of a dark uh, sort of surrounding of the image, a vignette, just to draw the attention really to the very center of that photo. Uh, so you see it's not crazy, quite quick, let's jump right in. Awesome, so welcome to Photoshop and let's get going here. Now there are a couple of things that I need to do. For example, that there is a gap here is not acceptable to me whatsoever. I, I need to close that gap, otherwise I can never sleep happily again. That's the first thing. The second is I need to make sure that the colors are a little bit more poppy and I also want to draw more attention to the actual center of the image right here. So sounds very easy, that's because it is. So let's get going and let's start first with the this little gap that we have here on the right hand side because uh, I'm gonna die. So first I'm gonna hit Command or Control and J for Jaguar on my keyboard and therefore make a copy of my background layer. Now again there are different ways of skinning that particular cat here. Uh, when I originally edited this image I tried to simply use the the quick selection tool for example and just like try to select the thing because I thought it has a different color but uh, as you can see it gets fizzy in these areas so that's not something we can use here so in the end I simply went for the pen tool so I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard to get the pen and I'm just gonna start and click down here I'm gonna drag click somewhere halfway through and make sure I get that curve uh, ever so slightly from that particular pillar right here and I also want to grab this and make it point that way and let's go and click here again make it slightly curved and usually you would zoom in way more than I'm doing here right now but uh, yeah you do what you can to keep the video short awesome so let's just go down 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 and close that up a little bit somewhere I don't know here hit the right hit the right key sure do a right click with your mouse and then make a selection I'm gonna fist that with like one pixel radius because sure and once I have that I'm gonna hit command or control and J so now I have that particular part of the image as a separate part right which is kind of cool so what I want to do is I want to transform that and close that damn gap so I'm gonna hit command or control and T to transform it once I have that you have the little hardcore transform what is it actually called warp mode Time. Yeah, you have the warp mode. Hit that and now I have a very free reign over how I want this shape of this pillar to be. So I'm going to take that bad boy and close that gap which otherwise would be an eyesore for the rest of my life. Here we go. Let's close it a bit more here. Something like that. That kind of does the trick. Cool. Uh, let's hit the enter key. Now of course it looks a little bit out of place because we have changed the lighting situation there as well and it looks rather like a weird hard edge. Also my pen job would have been probably a bit better. Anyway, what we want to do is we want to make that a little bit darker and just adapt that edge here to the rest of the image. Simple. Let's use a what? Right, a curve adjustment layer. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to bring it down to something like uh, this. Once I have that, close it down. Now I of course don't want the darkness in my whole image, so I'm going to hide the effect by hitting Command or Control and I on the keyboard. And with a white brush now and an opacity of um, 30%, I'm going to draw the effect in, but only I only want it on this pillar here, right? So an easy way to do that is by creating a clipping mask. Don't worry what that is, simply hit Command or Control and Alt as well as the letter G for greatness on your computer keyboard and what that does is it's going to tie that particular adjustment layer to the layer beneath it. So if you uh, yeah, zoom in here a little bit you can see now definitely there's a little arrow. So any adjustment I make now or any way that I paint on this adjustment layer will only be visible on that pillar that we just created. Which is awesome because now I don't have to worry of painting on the other layers. I cannot. I can only paint let me demonstrate. I can only paint on these three pillars because they are selected and linked to the um, to the adjustment layer. Awesome. Of course, I don't want to do that. So let's do that. Let's draw that stuff in here ever so slightly with 20%. Let's get a rather big brush, nice and soft. I'm just going to paint that pillar until it's nice and yeah, well, just fits in much better than it does right now. 
And a nice thing to do that is always just reduce the brightness of the object. Awesome. So now that this fits in a little bit better, another thing that we might want to do is uh, you see how there's a different color ever so slightly. I don't like that. Let's hit Command or Control on the Windows computer, uh, Command, Alt, Shift and N on the keyboard to get a new layer and change the blend mode to color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my brush, so B on the keyboard, select that nice orange and with an opacity of very little, 10% or something like that, I'm going to go and paint that color into this pillar right here to make it blend even better. Just blend it in there ever so slightly. Yeah, also down here, that is right. And let's also bring it up here a little bit to something like that. Cool. Uh, here a little bit more even. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if the saturation doesn't fit, don't worry about it. That's always something we can fix later. Awesome. So now we have that pillar nicely blended in there. The gap is gone. I should have maybe fussed it out a little bit a little bit more at the top here, but let's just assume it's absolutely perfect, though I could have done a better job right here. Now that this problem is fixed, there is very little left. First of all, we want to change the whole color composition into the more red, if that is what you want to do, and that is what I want to do, so you're going to do it with me. Here is the hue saturation layer. I'm going to create that. I'm going to jump over to the reds. Let's see if that works. And I'm simply going to change the hue, and it works beautifully. Like, uh, how horrid is this? Oh my god. No, what I want to do is simply push it ever so slightly into the more red direction. Something like this is already kind of cool. Now increase saturation to something like, maybe something like that. That works for me. Let's have a look at the before and the after. The before and the after and the before and the after. Now if I hit the, no, it's not the key. I want to make sure that my attention is really on the very center, not the very center, but that center of the tunnel here with that person. So an uh, easy way to do that is either with light or with color. So in this case, I'm going to take, let's say, 40% of that saturation increase that I just created out on the side right here. And I'm simply doing this with a brush as usual. So I'm just going to take it with a black color, of course. Stop it. Go away. I'm just going to take that out from here. Something like that. It's a very, very subtle difference, but uh, personally, I like really to concentrate the color where you want the people to look at, which in this case is simply the very center of that tunnel. Cool. Now, of course, there are more things that we need to do. Uh, first of which could be fixing the symmetry of the image just a notch. Uh, and especially because we have this thing here on the side that drives me insane. I don't know what that bar here is, but it has to go. Simply, we're going to create a stamp visible. So I'm going to hit Command or Control, Alt, Shift and E for Edgar on my computer. And now everything that you had seen before has been copied onto a new layer, right? So even if I were to switch all the other layers off, I would now have the before and after, before and after of what we have achieved so far. Let's switch that back stuff back on. Now what I want to do is hit Command or Control T to transform just like before and get that warp on again. So I'm going to take that side here. I'm just going to drag that to the side here until the gray area is simply no longer visible because that is the easiest way of fixing that stuff up. Now what I also want to do is maybe I want to take that side here and lift it up a little bit. And that is simply to make these lines here, like the, the ceilings of these archways or whatever you call those things, um, Tory gates, but I want it to be a little bit more symmetric. So just lifting that up ever so slightly may already help to give the image a more symmetric feel to it. So if we go and have a look at the before and after, yeah, I like that much more, much, much more. That's much better. Very happy person. Now, nearly lastly, we just need a little bit of a vignette. And again, very simple to do. We can use the very same layer. Just simply go to filter. And I love to use the camera raw filter for very simple things like that because it saves a ton of work. Um, of course, wait, before we do that, let's hit command and control, alt, shift and E once more. And then we're going to actually go to the camera raw filter. Beautiful. Uh, the reason we did that is now that now we don't have that weird cropped thing on the side. So we just made a new layer essentially with the content. Now let's jump over to FX and here is the vignette. Let's bring that really, let's bring it down to something like, yeah, that's kind of cool. I like it. I do like it. I don't think I want to feather much, not much, maybe something like that. Hit the OK button. And the last thing we need to do for today is bring a bit of brightness back into the image, especially in the center. So I'm just going to bring that up to something like that. I'm going to hit Command or Control and I to hide the effect. And with a white brush and an opacity of 20%, I'm going to bring that into the very center of the image here. 
just ever so slightly and step by step as far as you want to bring it in. Maybe something like that. Cool. So if you have a look at before the brightness and after the brightness, I like that. Fantastic. So if you have a total look at what we have done in these couple of minutes is we went from here, which is absolutely a very good image, nothing to complain about, but just to give this a little bit more of an extra mystique, a little bit of an extra spice. And of course, you can do whatever you want, more color, different shapes, different, I don't know, lighting situation. Uh, it's, it's your playground. Do whatever you need. And there we go. If I do look at the before and after, I am quite happy with the result. Nothing crazy, but still a very impact and powerful image. Awesome. If you did like the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's going to help me out a lot. Other than that, don't forget to get out there yourself and take pictures and edit them to your heart's content. And I shall see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.